Okay guys, so today what I want to do is take you through a little bit of contextualization. I think this is a skill that a lot of people are having a really tough time on, and I can understand why. I think contextualization seems kind of abstract and, and just, it feels kind of difficult, I think, to kind of figure out, you know, what is this doing at the beginning of an introductory paragraph? So I wanted to show you a particular essay that was turned into me that I think has some really excellent elements to it, but there are also some problems here. So it's going to give you a little bit of sense of what I'm looking for as well as um, some, some areas of problems that we don't want to have happen within the future. So in this particular case, just keep in mind, contextualization is anything that comes before the time period in the question. You need to have three specific issues, and it needs to be relevant to what you are talking about. So in this particular example, the essay starts off with the classical age, and remember uh, that this particular question was about the uh, transition from the post-classical age into the modern age. Uh, as far as our ability to manipulate nature. So in this case, the classical age does come before. So this is a plus. Okay, we're talking about the classical age uh, before uh, the time period in the question. So that's a really good thing. It was a time of new technology, scientific discoveries, and philosophies. Okay, the problem here is, is that this is kind of vague. This isn't really telling me anything specific as of yet. It's just sort of like referring to issues that are going to be talked about. We want to get to those issues as quickly as possible. Then we get into many great universities were established, empire strengthened, and expanded. Okay, the problem here in this particular case, this is not what we want to do. And the reason why is there's nothing here about the prompt, so nothing about nature. So this is not really where we want to go, okay, in contextualization. After that, we get a listing of major leaders like Julius Caesar, Alexander the Great, uh, Qin Shi Huidong, uh, living in the same period as Aristotle, Pythagoras, and Confucius. Again, this is coming from the time period, but there is nothing about nature here. So again, this is not really relevant. We're taking up space. We're not really doing anything as of yet uh, that's specific to the question. But here's where things get good. For an example of the brilliance of classical age inventions, Rome had engineered aqueducts, roads, and bridges to strengthen the empire providing cities with fresh water. Here we have something about nature, and we have a clear, clear connection. In this particular case, we're talking about Rome. This is during the, this is during the Middle Age, so that's a plus, okay, because we are before the time period, so that's a good thing. And we're talking about the control of fresh water. Thinking of thinking of thinking of thinking of have clear connections to nature. It's so a good thing. As, as now, we have engineered products. That's definitely an issue that connects up with nature. We've got one. Uh, for both Roman citizens and foreign merchants. The empire was so vast, the military needed to build reliable roads in order to travel quickly over land, construction of bridges, allowing them efficiently cross rivers. So here we've got a second issue. It's connecting directly to nature. How do we know that? Because the military built roads to get over land, construction of bridges allowed them to efficiently cross rivers. So here we've got clear connections in this particular case to nature. All these innovations controlled nature. So here we've got a clear statement connecting to nature. So this is really excellent uh, once we get to here. Um, overall, I would say this particular issue does list out three different issues. Okay, so we have an issue about aqueducts. Uh, we have an issue about roads, and we have an issue about rivers. So we've got our three issues, and that allows us to make contextualization. So hopefully this helps out. This is what I'm looking for in contextualization. I'd say the one big issue, too, that I, I'd want to be a little bit careful about on this particular one is that this is a little too narrow. Uh, the reason why is that we're sticking to Rome. Um, I'd like to see this expanded out into other issues, so we could make like a, a connection between Rome, China, and the Middle East. Maybe with the Silk Road would be a good idea. Um, but overall, this is a, a really good example of contextualization. Some of the mistakes that were made early on kind of get outweighed by the positives that, that was happening. So this is what I'm looking for for contextualization. I hope this helps out a little bit. Thanks a lot. See you in class.